Okay, so we have all the pre-show kinks out of the way. Let's kind of shift focus on how the program actually gets run. So let's start at the top and really discuss how you power everything up and what order you do that in. So we have all of our sources going into a mixer and then onto our amp. So the power up order is you always start out with your sources, then continuing onto your mixer, and then finally you turn on your amps. Now, if your amps were already on and you had nothing else uh, turned on and you fired up your mixer while your amps are on, you'll get a little spike there and that'll pop your speakers. You don't want that. And then in, in reverse, when you power down, always start out with your amps first, then you go backwards and kind of upstream turn your mixer off and then turn all of your sources off. A major thing to consider in terms of preparation is to have run sheets. Now if you're running a, you know, a backyard concert you may not have anything more than you know, just a set list but if you're going to be doing a show that has multiple presenters, uh, video feeds, multiple singers, uh, multiple solos, you really got to have a game plan. Now because many of you are going to be doing this in a house of worship, I'll follow through an example in a typical church service. If you're running an outdoor music festival, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. What we're basically trying to do here is just capture all the clue, uh, sorry, all the cues that we have to keep an eye out for. Let's imagine this is our sample run sheet here, and in the pre-service, we're going to have a CD player or some sort of media player that's going to be playing. Uh, all of the music as the people are starting to come in. You might want to set a note there just to set that to shuffle. And then we have all of the four songs in this uh, in this example here. And you can set up whatever you want, but here's the things that I really want to know every time is who's taking the lead, who's taking a solo, and then any other notes. So for example, for the first song, Worship the King, that is in John, uh, and he's going to be coming in on input number 20. So if I need to ride the lead vocal, I know exactly where 20 is. And then the same thing is that if there's a solo in the middle of the song, that's coming off of Gary's electric guitar, which is coming in uh, number uh, 26. And then if there's some, uh, on the next song, if there's a, say, a duet between John and Leslie, uh, they're coming in on 20 and 21. So make sure I can ride both of those. Uh, who's going to be taking a solo on that? Maybe a saxophone solo uh, on number uh, input number 28. And then also put some notes in there. Uh, it's a guitar ridden, uh, sorry, guitar um, driven song. So we want to make sure that we ride our guitars fairly hot. If you have a bunch of different guitars, you may want to put them on subgroups so you can ride the entire group if you like. And then when we go through there, same thing, you know, who takes the lead, uh, any other notes you want to want to put in there. Um, in the heel of the, your heart, you can see that there's, there's no backing vocals. So if you have a mute group for all your backing vocals, that'd be a great place to just drop them out and make sure that um, those microphones don't, don't feed back. And then when we go into welcome, uh, we can just go straight to our main handheld. We could set up a mute group, which basically mutes everything except maybe the piano. And um, that way there's no inadvertent things coming through microphones. Uh, and then when you go through to the sermon, that's the pastor's headset, and that could be mute group one, which just mutes completely everything. You might want to leave the piano uh, open if anybody came up on stage and wanted to start you know, playing uh, piano behind that. And then in the video announcements, you might want to mute all the microphones and make sure your video feed that is coming from, your, from the computer or your video people is, uh, is open. In terms of hitting target SPL levels, in other words, if you want to have consistency week after week in your services, then just go out and get yourself an SPL uh, meter or you can just use some of the apps that are on iPads and things like that to kind of give you an idea of how loud uh, your service is. So place them at the front of house position and there's no magic number, you know, I'm not going to say, okay, everything's got to be, you know, 82. Well, you know, compare, a, you know, a loud gospel versus, a, you know, a more folksy kind of service. 
there's there's no magic number. The magic number is the person in charge says, hey, I want it this loud and no louder. So let's imagine they said, okay, I want it to be 85. And um, so if you can kind of keep it around there, that is the, the place to do it. But here's the deal. The target SPL levels uh, on these meters, they can either be what they're called C-weighted or they're A-weighted. Now, as you can see, the C-weighted uh, across from the low frequencies to the high frequencies is fairly flat. The A-weighted is uh, tends to um, more closely uh, represent the way the human ear actually hears the, um, f from low frequencies to high frequencies. In other words, we're not so sensitive to low frequencies as we are to high frequencies. So if you're at a, a fairly low level, you know, just a just a regular church service, I would use an A weighting in terms of how loud things are. Uh, but as things get super loud, our ears, uh, frequency response tends to flatten out and it tends to be more like C weighting. So a mistake can be made is that if you're on a very loud SPL environment, if you're dealing with A weighted, you're... Uh, it's not the best way.